It is Mastercam's new 3 plus 2 automatic roughing toolpath. It's essentially an OptiRough that can do its own planular shifts. All right, uh, so I've got a part, I've got a stock model created. I'm gonna turn off a couple of things so I'm just back down to my basic part, although I don't need to, I'm just making it easy for me. I'm gonna go up to my toolpath ribbon and in my multi-axis gallery is 3 plus 2 auto, which is a brand new toolpath. So let's go ahead and take a look. So I'm gonna fire up a 3 plus 2 auto I think we have to come up with a, a better name for it, or a shorter name. Uh, let's see, I've got my tool selected, 10 inch or a 10 millimeter bowl. Uh, I'm going to go down to my stock. I'm sorry, I'm going to go to my model geometry first, just like you would on an OptiRef. And I'm going to go ahead and select my machining geometry, and I'm just going to give the solid just a good triple click. There we go. Just make sure I got all the surfaces. Yep, looks okay. I'll go ahead and add a little bit of stock to leave. I'll just add half a millimeter, 0.5, and then 0.5 again there. Uh, let's give that that color. Uh, and then I want to go ahead and add some check surfaces or some avoidance geometry. And essentially there, I'm just going to actually use my entire fixture and vice assembly. So I'm just going to go ahead and window that. And that's what I want to avoid. And again, I'll just go ahead and put in a simple stock to leave value there. For those there we go okay so going down to the stock page i'm going to go ahead and tell it i want you to use my first stock model for that so i am using stock on that and then i'm going to go down to my cut pattern and what i'm going to do is i'm going to use a dynamic or tricordial style uh, my constant depth step um, or number of slice so there's my depth cut there we'll go ahead and we'll, we'll drop that a little bit I'll go ahead and drop that. Actually, we'll do we'll do 20 millimeter. That's fine. I forget we're in metric, so 20 millimeters, okay. Uh, down on the bottom, I've got my step over, my maximum step over plus a desired step over. I'll go ahead and put my max step over there at, at six millimeters. Um, desired step over 4.8, so I'll be somewhere in there. That looks okay. Uh, while I'm setting a max depth step there, the one thing you know we know from OptiRough, one of the great things that makes it wonderful, is the step up routine. Now I still have that here. I go to my depth steps on this and I can choose a constant depth step basically to fill in what they're calling intermediate slices now. We know them as um, step ups. And we'll go ahead and we'll do two, two millimeters there. Now I can go to my tool axis control. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to create some planes. Now I can have it do it automatically. I can have it do it manually. Or in this case I'm going to do a semi-automatic. And let me get rid of some of the ones that are hanging around in there. So I'm going to remove those two. Uh, I've already got one initially created from the toolpath, which is just a straight sort of top view. And I'm going to go ahead and right click here to start adding some planes. I'm going to select a tool plane to add to this. I get a pop-up window that allows me to use, you know, uh, some of the basic planes. I can look at name planes. Uh, or in this particular case, I'm going to look for a solid face. Now, I don't have my solid turned on, so I do need to turn my part back on. And I'm just going to go ahead and pick, say, this face here. And if you remember this little field, I can adjust the x, y of that if I want to. But the number one is usually OK. So there's one plane listed. I'm going to right click again. I'm going to add a second tool plane. But this one I'm going to go ahead and add as a named plane or a listed plane. Because I've already created it. And there are my listed or named planes. I'm going to choose my undercut plane. Just a plane I created for that. And we'll go ahead and add that in there as well. Now, below that, I've got a little field called a search angle increment. And what the search angle increment, increment does, which is difficult to say, is it basically slices that part sort of as a sphere. So it's looking for features or surfaces or anything it can pick up between those planes at that incremental value. So every 10 degrees, it's going to look for something else to machine, sort of in a sphere. Now, below that, I've got a max stock to leave value. And it's kind of a quirky thing, but the max stock to leave is actually a combination of my stock to leave value for my machining geometry as well as my cut tolerance value. Now those add up, if I add those together, to 0.6 millimeter. What I need to do for my tool axis control, my max stock to leave, is just make that number slightly bigger, in this case 0.7. And that's all I'm going to do. Uh, Select geometry, define a couple of planes off the solid, set some 
basic step over, step down, and step up values, um, and what stock I want to leave. We'll go ahead and we'll generate this. Now I'm going to bring, here we go, I'm going to bring my multi-threading manager over so we can watch this process. And we'll see what kind of toolpath we get at the end of this. Anytime. The multi-threading manager, also known as the coffee break monitor. Oh, it's going to take a while. Time for a coffee break. Here we go. All right, so we got our toolpath. And it's, it's busy. And, and there's obviously a lot of things we could do to tighten that up as far as retracts and things. But the basics are there. If I compare what I have when I started, this is my first opening piece of stock and applying that multi, I'm sorry, the three plus two rough to that model, this is what I end up with. So this is with a single tool path and really not dialing it in that much. Um, you know, if I were to go back in and, and tighten things up, it'd, it'd be a little bit more efficient, might look a little nicer, but even just sort of just eyeballing it the first time through, um, that's what I get. And, you know, using traditional methods um, to having to take an opti rough and index it around, you know, I, I would still be working probably on the first one uh, at this point. So um, is it a very exciting new tool path? And just kind of like opti rough, I'm really interested to see where people are going to go with this.